Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is J. Arrow Sydney for the Sydney Table Talk Show, the XTTX. Brothers and sisters, I know it has been a long time. You people have been waiting for me out there to do my usual debates on the Benin Royal Rumble. But as a matter of fact, I have never found any useful information in this last one year to come on air. But today I have decided to come on air because there is a new development to the Benin Royal Rumble. As you are already aware, the Edo State government has settled amicably with the Ogiamie family and restored the title of the Ogiamie Chief Tensi Stool according to the 1968 Chief Tengsi edict of Midwestern State, which is still a valid edict. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the most important topic today is the restoration of the Ugyamiya's royal stool. What this means is, in order to have a restoration, there should be an existence of that stool, meaning that the Ugyamiya stool existed in law but what has happened it can be defined as unforeseen circumstances uh, in the last 42 years or 40 or 57 57 years this tool has remained redundant but anyway thanks to the judgment of the court of appeal we can begin to make analysis to start with i want to thank the honorable governor of edo state his Excellency Godwin Enogayase Obaseki for writing the wrong. Thank you, Your Excellency. And may God continue to bless you and continue to guide you in your, all your decisions. God knows the best. You are a great man. You are a courageous man. You are a man that is needed in a country like Nigeria where there is a lot of confusion. Thank you once again, Mr. Obaseki. Now, to my public, let me go straight to the point. Like I said earlier, the Ugyamie stool already exists according to the 1968 chieftaincy law, and that is why there was a restoration. And as you know, the Edo state government approached the chief magistrate court in Benin with a nolle prosecute. A nolle prosecute means that the state government can no longer prosecute his Imperial Majesty Rich Arisko or Sevegye, the Ogiame of Utanta Igodo Migodo Bini JP, and his brother, Chief Patrick Usabohe, the Uliha of Utanta Igodo Migodo Bini. This is where we are. Now, because of the confusion that is surrounding the restoration, a lot of people are still thinking out there that the Ogiame is a chief to the Oba of Benin. The Ugyame is not a chief to the Oba of Benin. The Ugyame is a distinct royal stool that is older than the Oba of Benin's stool. By 1968, the government of Exo Obamudia, who was then the governor or the administrator of Midwestern states, summed up a committee. And that committee does not only Look at the, did not only look at the issue of the Ugyame, the committee looked at the issue of several chieftaincy stools that were in Midwestern state because Midwestern state was just briefly separated from Western region. So there was need to make new laws in, to guide the chieftaincy or the traditional institution. When this committee was summoned, Obakenzoa was called to this committee. Several other traditional rulers in Midwestern state were called to this committee. At the end of the committee, 
the Obaze who was then the Ugiami of Utantambini Igo Domigoro himself was summoned. Every one of them made their claims and counterclaims. And what happened? The committee analyzed and then formulated and later gazetted a law which the government of S.O. Bermudia signed into law through uh, what I call an authority, the then Commissioner for Chieftaincy Affairs, Mr. P. Edodo. Ugiame became the competent chief census tool for Benin City local government area. Why the Obar of Benin became the competent chief census tool for Uselu-Ego local government area. This was in 1968. So we lived peacefully. Everyone lived in his domain. There was no problem. Throughout the 70s, when I was growing in Benin, the Obar of Benin did not claim supremacy over the Ugiame. But somewhere sometime in 1979, Ridiawa, with his federal connections, having worked with uh, the then military head of state, General Yakubu Gowon, used the Bende State Administrator, Usaini Abdullahi. They formulated, fabricated, manipulated a new chieftaincy edit without the committee. Unknowing to the Ugiamiers that their title had been hidden somewhere that the overall Benina had been handed both Usebu Ego and Benin City local government area, the Ugamians never knew about it. We were living in peace. And let me tell you something. When I was growing up, the the Obar of Benin, the then Obar of Benin, Obar Kenzwa, I am a I am a witness. He visited Ugamias Palace twice. I was a very, very little boy. I remember one of the occasions when he came. He came with one of his staff bearers. He came with one of his staff bearers without the huge entourage surrounding lately the Obar of Benin. He came with one of his, he came with one of his uh, um, staff bearer, and then a boy was carrying an umbrella because of the sun covering him. They came to the Ugemi's palace. There is a, a, a little door. When you are approaching the Ugemi's palace from Ring Road on the left hand side. The Ugiame opened that little door for him. Akenzwa passed through that very particular little door, came into the palace, went into the innermost palace of the Ugiame, met with the Ugiame, they discussed. I don't know what they discussed. They discussed. Then after a brief moment, he left and went back on foot. On foot. He came by foot and went on foot back to his palace at Ogbe. This is what I saw in the early 70s. <laughs> like I said, once a radio was formulated his laws without the committee, the lady was started bullying everybody in Benin. He started intimidating people. He started putting his people all over the whole places. He created a monopoly of power. He decides who goes to the Nigerian Defense Academy. He decides who goes to the Nigerian Police Academy. He decides who goes to the paramilitary academies. He took over everything. He built this power around himself. Why was he doing it? He was doing it knowing fully well that one day the Ugiame would come and say, look, gentlemen, look, this is my territory. Please stay clear. Then he would use all these people that he had already created in the territory of Ugiame to fight the Ugiame. This is exactly what we are witnessing today. Like I said, remember once again, Governor Godwin Obaseki did not gazette the Ugiame's chieftaincy stool. What he did was to right the wrong by restoring the Ugiame's chieftaincy stool, which is still existing under a valid law, the 1968 chieftaincy law. In order to get straight to the question, now, if you go back to the Court of Appeal Judgment, <laughs> the Court of Appeal Judgment was a win-win situation because the Honorable Justice Bada, who was the lead judge of that case, uh, said that the Ugiame, uh, came, the Ugiame has slept 38 years and only now to come and ask for what belongs to him. He did not say the Ugiame was not a traditional ruler. But he said the Ugiame had slept for 38 years. This was his own proclamation. But in the end of the matter, what happened? This same judge proclaimed that 
However, the chieftaincy law of 1968 is still a valid law. So if that law is still a valid law, that is why the Honorable and His Excellency Governor Godwin Obaseki decided to settle out of court and restore the Ogiamese chieftaincy stool. This is exactly the simplicity of the whole truth. Ogiamie is not a chief to the Oba of Benin. The Ogiamie is a competent traditional ruler whose area has been delineated by 1968 by the Ogbebundia's administration. You cannot know the history of Benin more than Ogbemudia. I would not tell Ogbemudia the history of Benin because Ogbemudia was born sometime in the early 20s or early 30s. Ogbemudia could have known Benin more than me and you. We are all arguing today. Those for the Ugiamie, those against the Ugiamie. But the fact that the man who gazetted the stool of the Ugiamie and the Oba of Berlin was a man who was very, very much aware about the history of that very particular territory by 1968. And that was the person of His Excellency Ugiamie, Dr. Samuel Usaibofo Ugiamie. Now that having been done, um, I've heard that some people said, look, the Attorney General said the reason why the Ugiamie was dragged to court or took action against the Ugiamie was because the Ugiamie proclaimed himself in 2015 as the Ugiamie, His Imperial Majesty, the Ugiamie of Utashtan Bini Nation, himself and his brother Patrick Usabohe. But gentlemen, the Oba of Benin had never been subject or has never supervised the installation of an Ugiamie for 1,000 years of history. The Ugiamie's coronation installation is a total right of the Ugiamie royal family. What the government has done is always to recognize officially by gazetting that title and presenting that title with a staff of office in 1968. That is exactly what the same government has done. Because Obas Obaseki has come to realize that the government was spending much money in fighting, fighting a cause that they were bound to lose at the Supreme Court. It's very, it was very simple because the Court of Appeal did not invalidate the 1968 chieftaincy law. Because if the Court of Appeal had said, okay, the 1968 chieftaincy law is no longer a valid law, then one would say, why would Obaseki then restore the Ugiamie's chieftaincy stool? But the reverse is the case. That Honorable Justice Bada created a whole lot of confusion. On one hand, he said, there's a time limitation on customary laws, and there are no time limitation on customary laws. On the other hand, he said, the same law that made the Ogiamie a traditional ruler is still an instrument of office. So it's so easy that Obaseki had used his common sense as an intelligent man, a man of high integrity. He restored that title to his glory. So I don't know what is the confusion, why people are talking about anxiety. There is no anxiety and nothing is going to happen about it. The Ogiamie can never, never, never be a chief to the Oba of Bini. It's impossible. It's impossible. Let me remind you people one thing. You see, the Oba's authority ended in 1897 when the British invaded his kingdom. When the British invaded, the Oba of Bini could not defend his territory even for one month. He lost just in six days. In six days, he was captured and taken to Calabar. The Ugiame then, who was a Dugia Wiri, the himself was arrested when he protested to the British that the Oba of Bini is not in sole control of the entire territory. He was arrested. So everybody paid for that invasion. And what was responsible for the invasion? The Oba of Bini did not inform the Ugiame that he had problems with the British because he had this supremacy tendency of claiming that Obanyato, Yase Webu. And let me clear this. When they say Obanyato, Yase Webu, we are not talking about abroad. We are not talking about foreign countries. There is a little village in Benin they call Ebo. 
there was an Oba who had problem with the king of Ebo. When he sent a message to that king to pay homage to him, the king sent a message back to him that he is not paying any homage to the Oba of Benin because the Oba of Uselu, as a matter of fact, he was known then as the Oba of Uselu, that he would not pay because he, this is his own territory. The Oba then mobilized his people. They went to, the, to this man's uh, little kingdom, fought the king of Ebo, defeated him, and he now sent a message to the man. Tell the king of Ebo that Oba Onyato, Yasebwebo, meaning that the Oba of Benin owns the land to the village of that man or to the kingdom of that man. This was how the word Oba Nyato, Yasebwebo, came about. All right? Good. Now, by 1968, Oba Kenzo did not complain that the Ugiame was usurping his territory. The Oba Kenzo participated in the committee. He laid claims to his territory, and his territory was handed to him. Ugiame Obaze laid claim to his territory. His territory was handed to him, and the government did their investigation. They did their analysis, and at the end of the day, they formulated a gazette. They were not the only people who were gazetted in 1968. There were other chieftains and stewards that were to follow in 1974 because there was a civil war. So the committee could not conclude his job by 1968. The committee dragged his job from, 19, from the late 60s to the early 70s. A lot of traditional rulers from the then Midwestern states were gazetted in 1974. Now one has a question. Do you know any traditional ruler that was gazetted in Nigeria that would later become a chief to a co-traditional ruler? It does not exist. Why should the Ubiame who was gazetted alongside with the Oba Benin now become a chief to the Oba Benin? Why? Why? There's no reason for it. And people are expecting us, the Ugiamis, to fold our hands and be looking at somebody take away from all what our forefathers labeled for. Like I've always said, the old Benin city, which is that Benin city of 1968, the entire land that makes up the entire Benin city of 1968, the Ugiami himself administered the whole of that land and equally handed over those land to the colonial authority when they came. There are documents sequel to this. We are working tightly and closely we are recuperating all these documents. A time will come when we will file other cases in the court, not against the state government, but this time against the Oba Benin and his so-called brothers in Igis who have been stealing lands that don't belong to them. You see, Ohevia Nigekoba is the owner of the entire GRA territory where you are now, where you can now find over 15 traditional rulers who were installed by the Oba of Benin and all these rulers they have no government recognition these are the same people who are busy selling lands impoverishing people turning people into i don't know what i call them turning people into absolute poverty look at benin city for example what is the progress in that city none because there is this monopoly by the Oba of Benin he has taken upon himself to decide who goes to the Defense Academy, who represent the state at the federal level, who represent the state at the local government level. He has taken upon himself. Therefore, the fact that people today do not contrast him or do not come out openly to challenge him does not mean that the people are afraid of him. No, they have no options. One, if you need a contract from an air exploration company in Edo South, the company, one of the requirements is that you must present a letter from a traditional ruler with a staff of office. And the Oba Bini is the only one with a staff of office. So you see, most of the business entrepreneurs who come from this territory, they are all afraid to contrast him because if they do that, whenever they need a letter for contrast, he is not going to give them these letters. These are the reasons why most of these people are not talking. Not that they are afraid of him. They are not afraid of him because the history shows that the people of Edo South never at the time in history they were afraid of the Oba of Benin. In fact, 
there were very, very historical moments when the overall Benin was seriously dealt with by these people. Yes, the history is there. I don't want to go repetition or repeating what I have said before, but the history is there for you to see that the people of Benin are not actually afraid of this man. But what they are conscious of, what they are avoiding, is that this man, having gotten a monopoly, could destroy their business. And since the state government all these years have never come out to say, look, Robert sit in your appropriate position. You don't have any constitutional authority. The people have been so quiet. But the good news now is this. With the restoration of the Ogyamia chieftaincy stool, the Ogyamia staff of office will be issued, and the Ogyamia can now guarantee a lot of these people representation when the need arises. This is where we are. All right? Then, having given a definition of what restoration stands for, briefly, a restoration means there is already an existence. Without an existence, you don't do a restoration. And as you know, Obaseki cannot intercede in the case of the honorary titles that the Oba of Benin creates. For example, if the Obasugi of Benin Oba, 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 what do you call him? Uh, Oba Yuwana of Benin has problem with the Oba Benin or ESA of Benin. The state government cannot intercede because the state government does not recognize these titles. They have never been recognized by the state at any time. These are titles that the Oba creates for himself. But in the case of the Ogiame, the Ogiame chieftaincy is a state stool. So when there is a problem, the problem is between the state and the Ogiame. The Ogiamians didn't go to court with the Oba Obini. They are in court with the state government. The Oba Obini is only a party, an interested party to the case. So let us not overstress issues. Somebody is saying out there, is it, is it the right thing or is Obaseki the right person to take a decision for the traditional institution? Obaseki is not taking a decision for the traditional institution. He never took a decision. Obaseki is taking a decision for the constituted state authority. The state controls the chieftaincy institution. The chieftaincy institution does not control the state. Put this in your brain. Don't let Yoba Bini continues to deceive you that he is God, he is not God. He's just a human being, my brother. You understand? And uh, again, I will chip in this to you. Who is Obairidiawa? Obairidiawa was the first grandson of Eweka II. Who is Princess Ikoyeme Eweka? Princess Ikoyeme Eweka was the first granddaughter of Oba Eweka II. Who is Oba Ewari? Oba Ewari is a son to the first grandson of Oba Eweka II and a son to the first granddaughter of Oba Eweka II. You see, you see the problem that we are facing in Benin? How if, if the first grandson had children with the first granddaughter? This is the problem. The whole confusion sets in from this point of view. They are trying to hide all the rubbish and nonsense they have done. How they have destroyed the, 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 the secrecy of the, the what they call um, the traditional institution. You know, the, the customary laws of Benin does not permit a grandson to have children with a granddaughter. But in this case, Eridiawa had his way. Not only that, even his son, Ewari. Ewari has been having children with the granddaughters of his grandfather. He has been doing the same thing. But with the Ugyamis, being the representative of the indigenous people, and at the same time, the custodian of the Ogisos dynasty, we are not party to this type of inhuman and incest way of existence, where distant people who has a different customary laws, we forbid these things in our family, and we condemn it absolutely. Right? I haven't said this. 
Somebody asked me a question, said, why are you not responding to that boy called Izudua or Izudeimi? I told him that Izudua is, um, is a technical idiot. He's a technical idiot because he's somebody who goes to the dictionary, picks a language, and begins to make nonsense and make nonsense of himself. Izudua does not even know the meaning of 6 minus 1 because 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. Meaning that Ududua is 1, Oramia is 6. Therefore, but, Ududua, but what Izudua is trying to teach the people is that 6 minus 1 is equal to 2. That is incorrect. 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. Ududua is number six. Oramia, uh, Ududua is number one, and Oramia is number six. Therefore, Oramia and Ududua never lived at the same time. There is no way Oramia could have been a direct son of Ududua, and there is no way Ududua could have been a Kaladera. For this reason, I have decided not to respond to Izudeimi or Izudua as he wills, feels to call himself. And again, he has, he has been making a huge lot of noise about this restoration. I heard him saying that with God willing, God will stand for them. But I'm surprised that Ududua Izudu, or Izudaimi, who believed that he who caused the over of being God the king, is now asking that God should come and help God. How can God help God? This is confusion. Fela says, dead body get accident. Yekba. Confusion break bone. Yekba. Na double wahala for dead body. How can you say the man you call God should now wait for God to come and fight for him? It's impossible. Nobody fights for God. God is, has, is the infinite mercy, the omnipotent and the omnipresent. Therefore, if the above being is God, let him fight for himself. You know, he said they are going to fight back. Well, with your gear means we are not sleeping, boy. We are not sleeping. We are waiting. We are ready. But remember this. With your gear means we are not going to use violence like you people. You people use thugs, and robbers, assassins, state instruments. We don't use this. We have a simple paper that is called the 1968 Chieftaincy Law that gazetted your gear means chieftaincy too. That paper is what we have. And in as much as that paper remains valid, we hold on to that and we will continue to fight. When you people are ready, let us meet in the court of law. Don't send your talks. You don't need talks. You don't need armed robbers. You don't need assassins. You don't need killers to resolve problems in the traditional institution. The court of law is there to resolve all these problems. Is there to resolve these problems? The Oba is a chief. The Ugiani is a chief. The Emir of Kano is a chief. Oba of Lagos is a chief. What the law says is that these chiefs are classified. First class, second class, first class, and fourth class. This is what the law says. No traditional ruler, as a matter of fact, is a king. And again, another issue that we need to treat is this. What is the hula balu about his imperial majesty? There's no appellation in law as to the meaning of his royal majesty, his imperial majesty, his royal highness. The laws of the country recognizes the nobility of the founding fathers of the Niger area, which later became Nigeria. The law recognizes their nobility. The law does not recognize his royal majesty, his royal blah, blah, blah. No. These are things we use for distinction purposes. That the Oba of Benin would say, or the Attorney General says, that the law only reserved his royal majesty for the Oba of Benin is a blank lie. Let the Attorney General show me where in law the law reserves his royal majesty for the Oba of Benin. It does not exist. As a matter of fact, they are all supposed to do, they are all supposed, they are all limited to His Royal Highness. This is 
They are all limited at most to His Royal Highness. They are all noble families. Once you are gazetted, you are a noble family. You are a royal majesty. You cannot be a royal majesty in a republican nation like Nigeria. What does a royal majesty mean? A royal majesty means that you own a country of your own where you are the head of government. Not when you are under a local government chairman, you call yourself a royal majesty and you become proud. It's not true. When you're talking of a royal majesty, you now go to Spain, Denmark, the Netherlands. In fact, see how they are called? The Royal Netherlands. United Kingdom. The Kingdom of Belgium. The Kingdom of Kuwait. The Kingdom of Morocco. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. They are not called the Republic of Kuwait. No. These are kingdoms. And the kings are the head of these governments. So when you answer Majesty in Nigeria, it's just for the fun of it. It has no meaning. There's no appellation in law. So there's no need for us making a whole lot of noise. The Ugemian's title has been restored according to the 1968 Chieftain's Law. The Ugemian is a traditional ruler. Joba is a traditional ruler. In 1968, the record was set straight. The Ugeme came to the committee that Ugemodia put together, laid claim to his own territory. The Oba kings were king. Oba kings were did not complain towards Ugemodia that Ugeme was usurping his territory. Rather, kings were accepted that Ugeme's territory is Ugeme's territory, why his territory is his territory. So, why are we now fighting ourselves? Greed. Because of the resources that is available in this very particular territory. That is the reason why the Oba's opinion wants to kill himself. You see, I would want to ask another question to Mr. Izudaimi or Izuduwa. Izuduwa, can you tell me how many Enigis that existed in 1897 in the following territories? Orion, the Obawa. <laughs> I want you to tell me how many Enigis the Obara of Benin instituted in Iyokoriyama. Ikubaroha, Iyekoriyama, Anuredo. Because this is where the truth lies. When you are able to show me how many Enigis the Obara of Benin instituted in these territories by 1897, then we can come to some compromises, me and you. Our arguments can change its course. We move to a different direction. But if you cannot show, because the authority of the Oba of Guinea ended in 1897, Mr. Zodua, that is the truth. I've explained to you, Mr. Zodua, how a gazette is made. You don't make a gazette in secrecy. Before the government makes a law and gazette that law, the government must set up a committee. In 1979, Hussein Abdullah did not set up a committee because when, if he had set up a committee, the Ugemia would have been aware because the Ugemia was already an interested party by the 1968 chieftains in law. He did not set up a committee. What he did was to secretly, because Iridiawa was somebody who was really mentally sick. That man was heavy on alcohol. I don't want to call him a drunkard. He was heavy on alcohol. And the only way he could hide his alcoholic tendencies was to proclaim himself Ukwak Bolo. You see, people don't talk to him. He would always cover his mouth, his smelling alcoholic mouth, with a white handkerchief. People don't know. He was a heavy drunkard. We have people who knew him when he was in Lagos because he lived in Lagos in the 60s and the 50s. The man was a cynic. The man committed a lot of atrocities when he became the Obarubini. He brought a lot of assassins. They started assassinating people in Benin. That idiot who called himself Nosaka Isekure, Isekure was the masterminder of all these killings. Some of these people were poisoned over their lands. People were intimidated. 
And if they did not succeed with intimidation, they invite these people to a meeting under the pretext of talking over the issues. These people are offered drinks, food. They are poisoned through this process. Some of them get home. They fall sick and they die. Those that were not taken that way were beaten up by the military. They used the military and the police to harass them. Those that they did not succeed in that way, they were secretly kidnapped and used for human sacrifices. This is what happened in Benin. This is how the over Benin has been operating. But we, the Ogianians, we cannot be bullied. We cannot be intimidated because we have been on ground. We founded Benin City. Historically and empirically, evidences are there. Now that our tool has been restored, we are working around the clock to produce a lot of government documents to show to the whole world that the Ogo Bini has been unsopping what belongs to our family. On this note, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say a big, 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 big thank you once again to His Excellency Governor Godwin Obaseki for being courageous enough to right the wrong. Thank you, Your Excellency. May God bless you. And I do hope my followers would listen to this video, analyze it very well, don't jump into conclusion. And let me warn you, as always, do not always take all the things I tell you for granted. When I, when I tell you something, I want you to take up that issue, bring their issue, and analyze it. If in 1968, a committee was set up, Akinzwa went to that committee. He made his claims, the Ogemiya made his claims. Esu Bermudia, who had the first and the information of Benin as at that time in 1968, and the committee members, they sat over this issue. People like Enaho took part in all these deliberations. And Akinzwa did not complain. And his territory was gazetted for him. And that of the Ogyame was gazetted for the Ogyame. Why in 1979? Why should it be in 1979? But Yoba will now come and say, look, in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, he has the authority to run a feudal system. What they want to do, or what they have been doing, is trying to run a feudal system in the Republic of Nigeria. That the land belongs to the Oba of Benin. This is a feudal system. Ewa himself, he said it. When the PFN members, the Pentecostal Federation of Nigeria members, visited him once in his palace, I remember one of the statements accredited to him. He said that God gave him the land to administer. In the Federal Republic of Nigeria, there is no way in law. The law in Nigeria says, states, we have what we call the Nigerian use, land use decree. We have what we call the State Land Use Acts. We don't have anything that is related to the overall business ownership of the land. The land belongs to the people and the government. And as a matter of fact, whenever the government needs land, the government goes to the people and pay royalties for their crops and then take over their lands. Lands that have been developed, the government pays compensations. The government does not go to the above building. So why should people be making a whole lot of noise when they don't know what is actually happening? I think the, the basic confusion is there are very, very common English words that we don't understand. Restoration has nothing to do with when you say Obaseki did not make Ugiamie chief chieftains too. Obaseki only restored an existing chieftains title whose law was still valid. On this note, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you once again. This is J.R. Sydney for the Sydney Table Talk Show. May God continue to bless each and every one of you.
and bless Benin as a whole. Progress. One love.